Hello everybody, hope you're doing okay. Now, apologies, this is going to be a bit of a geeky video, but here is a stride foot pod. Now, its primary purpose is really to measure your power when you're running. It also serves very well as a traditional foot pod, which measures your speed and cadence. And it's particularly useful if you're on a treadmill. It doesn't have a smart facility like to convey your treadmill speed to say Zwift, but there's also a feeling that the foot pod, or this particular one, actually measures your speed better than that your treadmill does because it actually measures your real speed as opposed to what the belt is. And you can get into very vast quantities of debate as to what actually this all means. But in true tradition, I thought I wouldn't just test one, I would actually test four. So I've got two on this shoe, and I've got one on this shoe, and I'll put this one over the top. So I want to test the theory that not all of these strides are made the same. So stride originally said when they came out that you don't need to calibrate your foot pod. There's, there's normally a facility on, say, a Garmin watch that you can put, apply what's called a calibration factor. But it's really sort of a scaling factor. So if your speed doesn't come out quite right, you can apply a factor and then sort of eventually scale it up. So what I want to see is if that is actually true and whether each of these strides come up sort of similar. So what I'm going to do is run on Swift. I'm going to pair my treadmill to one account and then each of these four strides to for other accounts, these are all test accounts and fortunately Zwift running is free, and then see how I go. Effectively I race myself, but only, you know, race myself virtually as it were. So let's have a quick look at my setup. So here we go, I've got an iPad there, I've got a laptop there, I've got my screen there, and I've got a phone and a big iPad. So what I did is set up a meetup between the five of us, the real me there on the treadmill and all these strides on those four other runners there. So hopefully as the gun goes now, we shall see us all heading off. And there we go, there's me running on the treadmill. So originally I'm running at 12 kph at a speed of 5 minutes exactly per kilometre. And you can see all the other strides have started. Now instantly you can see that they're actually going slower than me. Now what I did is to run for the first K at 12 kph steady and to see how I got on. Now instantly you can see that already the different strides are actually operating at different paces. The first stride, which is the one I had at the top of my right foot, is obviously doing the best and it's closest to the treadmill. It's actually not very far off at all, it's only three seconds behind. And then comes the third stride. This is the, the, third, the first, third and second ones, they're all stride summits. They're the original versions and I've got one stride wind, which is the new version. So the third st stride there is doing a bit slow. It's doing about 510, 511 pace on average. The second stride summit is doing about 514. And the stride wind is slowest of them all, round about 518. So if I wind that on now towards the end of the first K, when I'm just coming to the end of this 12 kph phase, and you can see that the stride wind there is already 18 seconds behind. Don't forget, all these strides have got no calibration. They're just taking the raw speed as they report. Whereas the first stride that I got, the this first stride summit, is only four seconds behind. So that's not doing too badly at all. So now you can see I'm actually changing my treadmill speed up to 13 kph. And you see there's a slight delay while all the strides get up to speed as it were. But already you can see it's already sort of stabilised and it's the same sort of effect that all these strides are operating at sort of discrete speed. So the stride, first stride is working the fastest and the stride wind is still the slowest. So now if I head towards the end of my second cable, I'm still running at 13 kph and already you can see there's quite big differences here now. The first stride is doing pretty well, only 7 seconds behind but the stride wind is as far as 34 seconds behind. We haven't even done 2k yet, so that's an awful lot of time to make up. You'd have to spend an awful lot of time training to make up 34 seconds. Now what I did now is actually to simulate stopping. I actually stopped my treadmill, virtually came to ground to a halt, and I wanted to adjust the view so that you can see some other people running here. So it's taken a few seconds for the other strides to notice that they've all stopped. And there you go, they've all stopped. And I've now adjusted the camera angle. I apologize, I slightly got, uh, must have brushed my Swiss screen. But I'm now getting back on. And for this section, the third K, I actually set my treadmill to a slow speed of 10 kph, which is exactly a six minute kilometer pace. And you can see then again that the same sort of thing's happening. The first stride is more or less 
the same speed as the treadmill, whereas the stride wind is significantly slower. In fact, 20 seconds per kilometer slower with the third and second strides there sort of in the middle. Now here we are towards the end of the third cable. I'm still running at 10 kph and you can see that those gaps are getting ever bigger. So I'm now 10 seconds behind on the, st the first stride. We didn't do too badly, but almost now a minute behind on the stride wind and the second stride is also very slow as well. And the stride three is sort of a compromise between all of them. So if you're in a race, you'd obviously pick the first stride, wouldn't you? <laughs> so now what I've done is I've moved up to 14 kph, which is around right about my marathon effort. So this is quite a reasonably hard effort for me now. You can see my pulse there is starting to rise. So let's just drag it on a bit to see how we're getting on later. So about three and a half K in, halfway through this 14 kph phase. And again, the stride, the first stride is doing pretty well. It's very, very close to the treadmill speed. Whereas the stride win one is 15 seconds per kilometre slower and now is over a minute behind. So I'm now coming towards the end of the fourth K where I'm doing 14 kph. And as you can see, those gaps are getting ever bigger. The stride wind is now over a minute behind. Stride two isn't doing too badly. It seems to have stabilised a bit. But certainly the first stride is still hanging on well and is only nine seconds behind. So it's not really actually losing any time at all. It's almost matching the treadmill now exactly. So for the last kilometer, I put it up to 15 kph, which is around about my sort of rough 10k speed, I would say at the moment. Maybe I could go a bit faster, but my heart rate has already crept in there to zone 4 at 140. So I'm certainly working quite hard now. And this would be sort of more, more like a race effort, I would say. And again, the first stride there is hanging in well. You can see that it's just, a, just hovering around the four minute mark as well. Just maybe fractionally slightly slower, but not much in it. But the stride win there, more around about 4.12, 4.13, so significantly slower. So now we've got the finish line in sight for the My Run. It's got about 100 meters to go, you can see, but you also see the gaps are say the same. In fact, the stride wind is still nine seconds behind. So I think at this speed, it's almost matching the treadmill almost exactly. Whereas the stride wind now is a whole one minute 23 behind. And the second stride is 53 seconds behind. So here I come on the My Run, about to go over the line. I put my hands up to let you know and I get my own private race results. So I've put on the screen what were the gaps at the end of the run. The first stride summit was nine seconds behind, the third one 36, the second one 54, and the stride wind a whole one minute 24. So what I did is I carried on running at 15 kph. That means that the final actual race results that you're seeing flashing up here are going to be slightly smaller gaps because obviously I was running at 15 kph, whereas the average of the whole run was less. But as you can see, these gaps are pretty big and demonstrating that certainly not all these strides have the same calibration. In fact, if you want to take a race, wouldn't you? You would almost certainly want to take the first stride that I got because it almost matches the treadmill and the stride wind. Well, that doesn't seem to match it very well at all. And there's the stride wind finally finishing a whole one minute and nine seconds behind. So what does this all mean? Well, basically it means that if you want to get your stride to match with your treadmill or to match outdoors, you basically need to go through a calibration procedure and measure over it over a known distance and then work out what the calibration is and apply that and then that speed will be speeded up so that stride win one for me outdoors i need about a calibration of 102.5 percent that basically seems to speed up the pace of the stride to match what the outdoor is roughly it's not an exact but it's it's closer but if i had it on the treadmill it'd be more like 105 percent now you might argue that's all to do with how the belt works and that but we won't get into all that on this discussion this test is all about we're seeing whether those four strides are identical in terms of how they treat pace and it wouldn't appear to be so what's interesting though this is the dcr analyzer that's dc rainmaker Often you might have seen these on power tests that he does also with GP Llama. So it seems unluckily that I actually got the power recorded on three of these ones. And despite the fact that the paces are different, the powers here are very similar. So the three I actually got the powers for averaged at 242 to the nearest one, 238 and 241. So I would argue that the powers are pretty much the same despite the fact that the speeds weren't. And one of the graphs that you can do here is speed. So if we enlarge some of this one here, this particular one when I was doing at 14 kph, you know, see the flat line there is the tremor, which is going at constant speed. And this purple one here is the first stride summit. So you can see that it was on average, it was going pretty much the exact same speed as the treadmill. Whereas the one here at the bottom, the green one was the stride wind, it was going the slowest. And in fact, if you look closely here that the 
stride wind is almost a kilometer per hour slower than the treadmill and the first stride summit. So that's a remarkable difference. And if you look at the same graph when I was going the rather slow for me speed of 10 kph, you're seeing quite a similar pattern. Obviously the flat line there is the treadmill. But again, the purple line, the first stride summit is the one that's closest to it and does sometimes actually pretty much match it. So on average, that's not doing too badly. But again, once again, the stride wind is the one there at the bottom in green. You also get a distance accumulation graph here and you can see that if I drill down towards the end here how the different ones are getting away from each other. So the most distance recorded because you're going obviously the fastest is to the my run and the first stride and then the ones here at the bottom here are the stride wind and the second stride summit which is also quite slow. So there I was going around the 5k loop in Autopia. So what is the conclusion to all these tests? Well, I think the conclusion is that if you want your a stride and treadmill to match, then you really need to understand that different strides may need a different calibration. There is actually a facility in Zwift that you actually can do a calibration. And I think regardless of the fact whether you think the stride is actually measuring your correct speed, there's a lot of advantage in your stride and your treadmill matching because when you do, a, say, a workout and it tells you to go up to a certain speed, it's very confusing if you change the speed dial on your treadmill but your, your stride is selling somewhere else. So fortunately, I've got my my run where I just take whatever speed the my run is going and run on with it. And I've done a few other videos to say that it seems to work pretty well for me. But if you don't have that luxury and you have to use the stride, then it's kind of up to you. As you Would you trust the, the stride reported speed as is? Or would you just go on the treadmill speed? I think the important thing is really it's all good training and it's all good running and it's far better than sitting on the couch. So I hope you found this interesting. and look forward to seeing you on the next one then. Bye.